Today on Big C TV episode 15, which is part two of our big double feature of episodes, we're going to review Toy Story of Terror, a new Toy Story feature premiering tonight on ABC. Um, we're also going to give you a Disney Infinity blowout. We're going to do a test drive of one of the playset modes of Disney Infinity. We're also going to do a Thunderdome in one of the Toy Box adventures of Disney Infinity. And I'm going to get on my soapbox and talk about the recent delay of Watch Dogs into 2014. Don't go away, all that's next on Big C TV. Once again, this is Chris, a.k.a. Big C, and welcome to episode 15 of our double header. Um, 14 was our first part, 15 is our second, hence the reason why I'm wearing the same outfit for two episodes. So, today's episode is more so about Disney than anything else. Um, we're going to do a review of the recent Toy Story Halloween special. We're also going to do lots of stuff on Disney Infinity, and then I'm going to get on my soapbox. So, let's get things kicked off with our video review of Toy Story of Terror. Ooh. Have you seen Potato Head? What? No. And so it begins. As a huge Toy Story fan, the recent Toy Story shorts have kind of been a breath of fresh air. After the masterpiece that was Toy Story 3, a lot of us were worried that we'd seen the end of Andy's toys. Not so. In fact, the recent shorts that have come out with various Disney films have been quite successful, and the latest of which isn't even a short attached to a movie. In fact, it's a half-hour holiday special that's debuting on ABC. The new short entitled Toy Story of Terror definitely takes nods from classic horror films and puts them to use in the Toy Story world. The film features several references to classic horror films, with of course the character of Mr. Pricklepants voiced by Timothy Dalton, giving hints about what's to come. These references are quite amusing, and of course the fact that it plays homage to so many classic horror films and other, other different films, including Jurassic Park for instance, um, is quite amusing. The entire voice cast from the films is back, so you've got Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, and all your great um, Toy Story characters. The star of this show is definitely Jessie, voiced by Joan Cusack. This is really Jessie's coming out party. She didn't really have that big of a role in the films, so this is her chance to shine, and she does a great job. Cusack really does a great job of giving Jessie emotion in her most difficult times, and she definitely comes through at the end. It's only a half hour special, but it's just the dose of Toy Story that fans have been looking for. Because come on, you can never have enough Toy Story. It's one of the greatest trilogies of all time. Enough said. We award Toy Story of Terror an A, or awesome. All right, so next up, we are going to do a test drive of Disney Infinity. We're going to be playing in the Pirates of the Caribbean um, playset, which was part of the starter pack. So take a look at that. Hey, everyone, this is Chris, and we are about to play Disney Infinity, the uh, Disney version of Skylanders, essentially. So right now, what it's doing is it's checking the uh, Disney Infinity base, make sure everything's plugged in properly, make sure it's got everything set up. Um, there we go. So I figured I've been playing through the, the uh, Monsters University playset for the most part, but I figured, you know, for this, since I'm pretty far into that, um, I'm going to try to do something different. So we're going to do Pirates. So I'll be playing as Captain Jack Sparrow during this mission. So let's see how this goes. So in case you didn't tell, Infinity is actually really fun. Um, 
get these different figures, you can put them in the game, you can get power-ups and all these different things. So right now I have Captain Jack Sparrow as my, my character, and then um, I'm using the Bolt power-up, which I just got yesterday, so I don't know what it does. But we're going to find out, because we can. So let's see what happens in the Pirates world. What's that game that sees are mine to rule? <laughs> Fire! Of course we would be under attack. Now, we find a dock without being noticed, or shot, or killed. Hmm. Alright, so right now I'm following the arrow on my screen to this dock. So I don't get shot. Now in addition to Jack Sparrow, there are two other figures you can use for the Pirates of the Caribbean playset. Um, they also have Captain Barbosa and Davy Jones. So, if you buy those two figures, you can use them in this playset as well. I am going to dock my dinghy. There we go. Don't worry, mate. You did your best. I did my best. And it's just my best. What's more better? Ah, Quintana Rigetti. Always good for a laugh. I'm going to shoot them. What is meant for you? We brings bad news about our Mr. Gibbs. He's not dead or nothing. Just been locked in solitary confinement, it's all. Poor blighter. But he knows where to find him. Follow us. Alright, I'll follow you guys. Treasure! Yay, I found some treasure. We're not able to get ourselves in beyond this point, sir. Might be able to help us. Sure, guys, I'll help you. There we go. Thanks, guys. So, Sparrow's weapons, you have the Flintlock pistol and you also have a sword. It makes them very formidable for fighting. So... That's good. Alright. So let's move on to our next mission. These things give you uh, pieces that you can use in the toy box, which we're going to really show off on a later date. But right now, we got some other stuff to show you. It's a bit more than we bargained for, but you'll find games up in that Treasure! Oh. 
Alright, so let's keep going. Try to rescue Mr. Gibbs before we end this test drive. Double jumping. There we go, enemies. Oh crap. Dragon Woman's head. Get in there, Gibbs. I'm coming to you. Jump up. Keep her coming. You're almost here, Captain. I'm working on it, Gibbs. Yay! Rescue Mr. Gibbs. Well, Mr. Gibbs, almost. is the map in your possession? Sadly, no. Found its height, but sure enough, we pissed me off if we want to meet Davy Jones to the map. Elsewise, he'll be on his way to collect the treasure. Alright, so there's a nice taste of uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean place set for Disney Affinity. We've got lots more Disney Infinity stuff coming, including later in this episode, where we're going to do a battle, or co-op battle, in um, Thunderdome on Disney Infinity. So look for many more Disney Infinity footage uh, later on. In the meantime, I'm Chris. Thanks for watching Disney Infinity Test Drive. Alright, next up we're going to do a toy box um, Thunderdome, where Corey and I, Corey's first appearance on Big CTV, by the way, um, are going to play one of the game modes, which is called an adventure, um, part of the toy box mode. We're going to do a more fully fledged toy box test drive later on, but for now, that's what we're going to do. So, here's a toy box test drive, also known as a Thunderdome. Hello there, this is Chris, and joined by uh, my roommate and awesome person extraordinaire, Mr. Corey Edge. And we are going to be playing some Disney Infinity. Uh, we're going to do a Thunderdome on one of the game modes. Now, if you noticed, we don't have our figures placed on the board. How Disney Infinity works is, of course, you have a little orb, you place um, your figure on there, and then you get to play with that figure. Etc. So I'm going to show you up close who we are going to be playing as. Corey will be portraying Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. And I will be playing the Pumpkin King himself, Mr. Jack Skellington. So it's the Jack and Jack combo. Then we're going to be doing a little mini game called Sumo. It's one of the adventures on Disney Infinity. So now I'm going to place our two people on the board. Corey's gonna join real quick. <clears throat> as soon as it loads. 
There we go. And voila! You see Jack twice. And there's Jack again. Jack and Jack, together again. So now we're gonna play a mission. To do that, why am I in orb? Oh, I'm in. No, I don't want to pick a toy. Pick an adventure. Sumo. <clears throat> this is a very challenging mini game um, where you get to. It, it's kind of like a King of the Hill thing, but while you're battling waves and waves of enemies and collecting power-ups and such, um, the ground below you is collapsing, so you have to try to, in addition to battling and not getting killed, avoid getting knocked off. Or in co-op, you have to avoid knocking your teammate off as well, which Corey and I have accidentally done many, many a time. It's challenging. So here we are. We're gonna do this. Stay on the blocks as long as you can. All right. I wonder what Sally is up to today. Let's see what we got. Oh, we have a toilet paper launcher. Crap! Why did I select that? I want a better gun! The baseball gun's already okay, now it's done. I have my pumpkin bomb back! Shoot. This is Jack's default weapon, he throws little pumpkin bombs at enemies. So, oh, there's a baseball gun. Baseball gun is from Phineas and Ferb. It's pretty powerful, but you have to be careful not to knock your teammate off of it. It's also very slow reload. But if you use it properly, it can be great. Very nicely done. There we go, knocked him off. There's a paintball gun, Corey. Oh. And we got bronze medal. Good start. Oh, We're killing these dirt bots. There's a Buzz Lightyear blaster. I'm going to use that now. I kill them. I know we're we're actually doing quite well. Nobody's really had any risk of being knocked off. These guys are pain. Oh no! Wow. Corey got knocked off, so it's up to me now. I probably won't make it, but you never know. Oh shoot, I almost got knocked off. Do a little ground pound. Yeah, knocked him off. No! No! And I fell off. Well, that was a good example. We did decently. We're probably going to try again. But that's a taste of the uh, sumo game mode on Disney Infinity. I'm sure you'll see many more. We're going to be playing this game for a long time because there's so much to do in it and so much to see and figures to get and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's our test drive Thunderdome of the uh, sumo match, even though we were co-op, like technically won, but it was co-op, so it doesn't really count. Anyway, thanks for watching. Alright, last but certainly not least in this episode, I'm going to get on my soapbox. And I'm going to talk about the recent delay of Watch Dogs in 2014. A big deal for us and for gamers everywhere looking forward to kicking off the next gen with Ubisoft's highly anticipated open world shooter. Let's take it on the soapbox. Okay, so Watch Dogs, highly anticipated game. A game that everyone was expecting, both for current gen and for next gen. 
yesterday, which is a little less than a month before the game was supposed to launch. Ubisoft comes out and says the game is delayed until possibly as late as June of 2014. And that's a big blow. Not only to gamers who were expecting it to be, you know, a cornerstone of our launch lineup for the new systems, but also to them, they had a huge stock plummet because they're expected to lose a ton of money due to Watch Dogs being delayed. And also it hurts gamers' trust because we were expecting that game to come out and it's not. Now I understand quality should come before everything else and I applaud Ubisoft for being willing to push back a game in order to make sure it's good quality. But here's my question, is it really in that bad shape that they had to push it back that far? It looked pretty darn good and everybody who's you know, played the game and have seen the game in person said it looked really good. So I'm, I'm just wondering why it's being delayed that far too. I mean, the fact that it's not going to come out till April at the earliest, possibly June. That's, that's a long way away, and I think the interest level is probably going to wane quite a bit, considering how long Ubisoft's been talking about this game, and now it's not coming out till that late. I'm not sure it was the best move. Um, also, of course, a lot of next-gen gamers are going to be upset, because, I mean, a lot of people bought bundles on Amazon or GameStop. They included Watch Dogs, and now they're not going to have a game. That sucks. Um, honestly, Ubisoft should do something to make up for that. Whether it's, <clears throat> I mean, maybe giving you a bonus for Watch Dogs, or maybe if you pre-order Watch Dogs, you get a free game or something. I mean, they should do something to make up for the fact that now we're not going to get to play Watch Dogs this year, and probably not for a while. That's my two cents. Um, I had the game pre-ordered. I had to cancel it because there's no point in holding on to it for that long. Um, so now our launch lineup for the Xbox One is only going to include eight games. But it's still eight games, so that's pretty darn good. Um, but Watch Dogs will not be one of those, sadly. So, there's that. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Before we let you go, here is a recap of our one review before we go. Toy Story of Terror received an A, or awesome, because it's great to see the gang back in action, and it does a lot of different references to both horror films and just other great films. The animation is excellent, the voice acting is excellent, and it's a great little bite-sized story that's definitely welcomed by fans of the Toy Story franchise. Alright, that's going to do it for this episode of Big C TV. I'm Chris. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and we'll see you next week for a very exciting episode 16, where we're going to get to test drive the Xbox One. That's right. You hear it here first. See you then.